Welcome to Shanghai. I'm Pete Tong, one of the co-founders of the International Music Summit. The IMS Asia Pacific arrived in Shanghai for the first time this year for two days of insightful panels, keynotes, workshops and more. IMS Asia Pacific kicked off with important discussions that the region faces, including uh, insight from chairman and founder, CEO of A2 Live, Eric Zhou here in China. The IMS took a special market focus look at Japan and spotlighted a panel of buzzing up and coming talents from the local markets before heading to Dada for a special boiler room debut with Skrillex in partnership with the IMS Asia Pacific. One of the big challenges of EDM in the West was overcoming the chip on its shoulder, whether it was perceived or real or whatever it was. And he said that took a long time. Now let's jump over to Asia. I think there's a huge advantage here that there is no chip on the shoulder. There never was a chip. I think it was a blessing in disguise to some extent that EDM came in here a little bit later. It's much more interesting to sign the first Chinese superstar than to market and sell all the superstars that Spinning has on the roster now. The population here in Asia and the potential uh, Dance music is, is, is just starting here, but we have to be very careful not to over, overdo it. The image part has actually been improving. Initially, people see anything to do with a large DJ event as a rave, uh, a rave aka also drugs. They don't see it as much as music or bringing the musical experience or a concert. Um, so I think that has been generally improving. We're shaping the culture. I wouldn't say creating the culture. I mean, what I call the Yao Ming effect. So you've got everybody dreaming to become in Chase, and they're going out. They're going out to try to learn to be, be a DJ, try to produce, and start end up buying CDJs equipment. So basically, the whole industry starts to thrive. What I think our job is is to find exceptional artists, and there are very, very few exceptional artists. We have a lot of opportunity to expand the bin, not only the business, but the culture, the DJ culture and the music culture in Japan more. Uh, so th this major problem we have, which I think everybody knows, is the VPN problem. So we have this thing that which Twitter, Instagram and everything, SoundCloud is all blocked. So technically there's no way for VPN, but for normal people there's no way for you just to reach, reach out. So there are like two separate worlds right there. It's like China and the rest. Although we will have uh, 200 festivals in China this year, but I think it's not enough because uh, China is so big. That's why we have a new festival. We have a MTA festival. We have a new festival for the EDM audience. The number one challenge for doing any festival, any big scale event is uh, permits. It's multiple permits which you need to go through. The number one step you need to get is MOC, Ministry of Culture. Without that, they simply will not allow you to do events. In the underground scene, we've been doing it for years, you know. We've been playing international gigs for years. I mean, I've played Tresor in, in Berlin or, you know, played gigs in New York and whatever. So the fact is that very much happening. Day two united mega markets India and China before welcoming Team Skrillex to the stage for a candid discussion about what it takes to break through and navigate the foreign markets of Asia Pacific. We're not we're not financially driven, we're adventure driven, we're, we're music and art driven. I guess colorize that in a way like you know there wasn't you know originally the brand was it was just the logo right and it was Ausla and now we've kind of brought that to life with different music videos and events and it feels like Ausla has a personality now. I'm like that's you know for me that's the most exciting part of it, right? Because that's the uh, the most physical manifestation of what you're doing. When we're whether we're in India or here in China, being at these things and having fans come up to us and talk about how much we're doing influences them and seeing them at the shows reacting, it's so it's such a different world from like okay yeah we got a bunch of streams online that's a number on a page, but being at these events, that's the real shit. All these clubs, particularly in Sydney, that are now shut, these are the clubs that I learnt my craft and got my contacts and really sort of became and shaped myself as an artist. All these places are now shut. And we played in Guangzhou, Shanghai. We brought this guy called Jazzy M, who was the resident DJ there. Our two governments worked together 
And all I remember is we did a, a gig and you could see Jazzy M and you could see the Ministry of Sound <laughs> logo. And on every podium where you would normally obviously have a dancer, there was a soldier with a gun. And you, all you could see was the silhouettes of machine guns. And basically the promoter was like, if you dance with your hands in the air, you're on drugs and we'll shoot you. So we were all just like, kind of like dancing, like, I mean, what do you do? And we've got a really iconic shot. It must still be the Ministry of Sound offices of just Jazzy M, the Ministry of Sound logo. People loving it, but just with their arms down and then these silhouettes of just machine guns on podiums. And it was an image that I remembered with Ben earlier. Shanghai especially feels to me like it's going to become one of those influencer cities, a New York, a Berlin, a, you know, Rome. Uh, it, it has that energy right now. And the conference capped off with an exciting coming together of cultures with Alesso and Asian superstar John Tsai. Never remixed a song that's in a different a, language. A different language than English, so yeah. it was really cool to be honest. Exactly. But the most important things that you have to really put yourself inside the music and you do feel it. Thank you so much to all of our delegates, speakers and sponsors for being part of this year's IMS Asia Pacific. We'll see you next year.